Well, good evening, uh, everyone. My name is Gregory Burke, and uh, I'm the director of the power plant, and it's a, a very great pleasure to welcome you all to this lecture by the internationally renowned artist Thomas Hirshhorn. Some of you will have been at the fantastic lecture that uh, Thomas gave here last year as part of our international lecture series. And as part of that visit, we at the power plant confirmed plans to stage uh, his massive work, Das Aus, the Eye, which will be the focus of his talk tonight. The exhibition itself will feature as part of our relaunch program, which kicks off with a free party on Thursday, March the 10th from 6 to 10 p.m. So I hope you can all be there for that. At this time, we will be launching our new lobby, retail and reception space, new website and new visual identity, and the three new spring uh, 2011 exhibitions, including, of course, Das Auge, the Eye. A small publication will be available at that time on the exhibition, which features an interview with the artist, and that interview will also be posted on our new website from the 10th of March. As a background to Thomas Hirschhorn, uh, he was born in 1957 in Bern, Switzerland, and has lived and worked in Paris since 1983. Selected to represent his native Switzerland at the upcoming 2011 Venice Biennale, Hirschhorn is renowned for his sprawling, immersive artworks that use everyday materials, found images from the news and mass media, and graffiti-like texts to engage audiences in actively thinking about politics and philosophy. Recent solo exhibitions have taken place at the Palais de Tokyo in Paris in 2004, the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston in 2005, the Pinacothèque de Moderne in Munich in 2005, the Musée d'Art Contemporain de Montréal in 2007, and the Museo uh, Tamayo, Mexico in 2008. Uh, Thomas Hirschhorn has also received the Marcel Duchamp Prize and the Joseph Boyce Prize. Now, the power plant is indebted to, uh, to our funders, the Canada Council for the Arts, the Ontario Arts Council, and the Toronto Arts Council, and our partners at Harbourfront Centre. Our public programs are supported by our primary education sponsor, CIBC Wood Gundy. And we also like to give a, a warm thanks to the Latner family, uh, the L'Institut Francais and the Consulate General of France in, in Toronto for their major support of uh, Thomas Hirschhorn's exhibition. Uh, they made the exhibition and also this visit to Toronto possible. Following the presentation tonight, Thomas will take questions, but please wait for the microphone as we are recording this lecture. Uh, without further ado, please welcome Thomas Hirschhorn. Good evening. Thank you very much, Gregory. I would like to thank you first, Gregory, for your invitation to bring me to Toronto again. It's a, a pleasure as an artist to work with a curator as you, a curator who is sensitive, who has plenty of spirit, and who has style. I was here even not a year ago, I think. I spoke about uh, the Bilmer Spinoza Festival. Today, I will speak about the work here, presented, Das Auge. I'm, it's only one year, I'm afraid. My English is not better than a year before. So, um, something also would like to say that Gregory, in the preparation of this exhibition, he asked me five questions. And what struck me and what made me happy was that all of these five questions did touch the heart problematic of the work Das Auge. In fact, um, instead of the fact that now, as Gregory mentioned, the questions are, or the responses are in, in a folder or a poster, um, this lecture, in a way, is also uh, an extension uh, to explain you 
uh, Gregory at the work you host here. The essential question, I think, of the artist is form, the form question. And uh, it is with this work not different than with other works. What means form? Form is another word for chaos. Form is another word for precision, another word for complexity, for inclusion. Form is what I want to give. I say I want to give form. I don't want to make form. This is the difference because it's a form which is very, very, must be very close to myself. It's a form that I have to invent myself. And uh, in a way, what I want is uh, with this form, I want to, uh, to go behind the habits, the aesthetical, the political, the cultural habits. I want to create a new form. I want that this form can create a truth, a new truth. This is the goal. This is what I wanted. This is what I wanted with the work Das Auge. So, Das Auge, the eye, is the form. This I invented. It is the form for me um, because the eye, one eye, is seeing not everything, but this eye sees everything which is red. This is the specificity of this form of the eye. So this was the starting point for me to, the, to do this work that I want to present here. The form is the eye, and the eye is the truth. Not the truth of some information, or uh, some opinion, or some discussion, or some exchange, but the truth as such. This was my starting point. So, the eye, because it sees everything which is red, makes no distinction. Just they put the eye put all together what you, which is red, has the power to link things and together behind judging the thing, behind making a judgment about it. This was the develo development of uh, the eye. I made two plans for me, two collages also, because in fact when I do an artwork, even in the space, it's like a collage, but in the third dimension, this is the second dimension collage I did before, one of them. So in this collage, I wanted to point out all kind of reds, you know, the red of a Ferrari, the red of a red rose, the red of uh, the flag of Turkey, the red of the flag of uh, the Red Cross, the red also of the habit of a Guantanamo prisoner. So in this map, I, I wanted to reunify all different reds. And then I made an, another map. This is, uh, I wanted to work out what makes that the eye sees red, of course. What is it? Injustice, inequality, a lake of universality. These are the two maps I made. They are integrated in the work. To start, in order to charge, and to start my work, to charge the form, the eye. Gregory, one of the questions of Gregory was, what, uh, what has the work to do with Bataille? Because I mentioned it in my letter I wrote in order to explain the work. So, and I mentioned that my work has nothing to do with Bataille. And this is true. Only, of course, I am truthful with, with my love to Bataille, who I admire uh, very much. And of course, I know that Georges Bataille has a, a connection to, 
to the eye, uh, here the story of the eye. As you perhaps know, the father of Georges Bataille was blind, and the, the kid, Georges Bataille, was fascinated to see uh, his father blind, but uh, the eye uh, turning uh, all the time uh, without seeing. So, uh, of course, there are connections, they're interesting, but it was not a starting point for my work, uh, the eye. When I mentioned Georges Bataille, it was only to make a kind of homage, a shadow homage. Um, the red, okay, the eye is the form. The red is the dynamic of this exhibition, the dynamic which links things together, which is fluid, which is extensible, which is, which is never finished. This is the red. Red, the red color. The red, like a red carpet, like red blood, or color red. Red, like the signal red. Red, like red tears. And red, uh, to link things together. So the red in this work is, uh, to me, the dynamic, who links the things together, who, who don't fix them, but let them open and let them, let them uh, be in movement. This is the dynamic red. So, um, how after I try to to give uh, form to this uh, assertion, the I. Uh, one uh, word is subjector. Subjector is what I call the, the, the mannequins. The mannequins I'm working with uh, since um, several years, a few years. I work with the mannequins. Uh, in different exhibitions, I'm interested in uh, the mannequins. I'm interested, I call them subjective, because they are, they, are, uh, a f uh, uh, they are a support who I can project uh, something. I am not uh, the first and not the only artist, of course, who works with these uh, mannequins, with these subjectors. I also work sometimes only with part of subjected. What I'm interested in is, of course, that they are coming directly of the everyday life, of the, of the uh, windows of shops. And, um, they, and what I'm interested in is that they are representing, of course, a human, a human body. And uh, what I'm interested in myself is uh, there is still uh, a half second doubt when uh, on the street um, uh, I, I encounter a mannequin. Is this a real person or is this a, a sculpture, in fact? And I'm interested in a sculpture also in these in, in this, uh, mannequins. So, as I mentioned, I'm not the first, of course, and certainly not the last who works with these mannequins. And I like there is a, a rich history in the art, I like these mannequins in the, the first international Dada Art Fair in Berlin, 1920. Uh, and uh, also uh, the surrealists in this exhi exhibition in Paris, in the uh, Galerie de Beaux-Arts in 1938 used a lot of these mannequins. So another point I would like um, to make clear for you is I spoke about the form and now about the aesthetic. There are different things, you know. The form is the eye with this idea, the truth, and to be hurt by things that goes behind the information understanding. The aesthetic is uh, where I'm working in, of course. Uh, 
Gregory mentioned some material I'm working in, but it's not only the material, it's the light, it's the density, it's how things, how things are done, etc. Uh, I, in the exhibition, Das Auge, there are chairs, and on these chairs, I, I, I glued, I did glue uh, heads of, cut out of heads of, of people. What, what do they want? What they have to do? What they want to say? Um, they are the, the passerby, the anonymous, the people who, um, by chance or as bad luck, are in a situation, perhaps in a uh, difficult situation. So they're the civilians, they are the innocents, uh, they, are the, they are representing the not involved, the not engaged in something. So I'm, I'm interested in this form of, uh, in this form of this, uh, of this uh, heads, cut heads. And they are coming directly, directly from this picture I saw. Uh, this is a picture of a, a kind of training camp of armed forces uh, in order to, to liberate hostages in an airplane, they did construct a kind of fake airplane or a cabin of fake airplane. And I like a lot, of course, first I like this, what they did. And uh, I like, in order after to represent the innocent, the people not to kill, yes, they put um, these cutted heads on, on these chairs. And I like this creativity. I like this simplicity, this silliness. And that's why directly my, uh, my chairs in this exhibition are coming from, from this. There are also, they have not only, of course, they have not only the, they are not only the innocent and they are not only the anonymous and the not involved. They have also, and always, because I'm an artist, I'm interested in sculptural questions, they have another function. They have the function to, to give a direction, to, to look to, like you look to me, I look to you, they give a direction. They give a direction to, to the space where, where things are. So this is why they have not only this function as, as as non-concerned, but also they are public who gives a direction in the, in, the, in the exhibition. This is an aesthetical decision, you know? It's aesthetical, it's only aesthetic. And I like to, to, to take this kind of aesthetical decision. Like this also, this beautiful crea creation of this woman who put a, a red color on her fur. So I, I'm very interested in this. It's simple, it's evident, it's clear, and it's an act of, uh, I think, of this person uh, of creativity. So there are a lot of things happen in the street that I'm, I'm just interested in because I think the people are creative. So I take this over. I take this to me like a recuperation. Yes, or a re <laughs> recuperation because in fact I think they are my aesthetic. So I have to take them back from the street. You know? So this is how I work with aesthetic. So I want to go a little bit forward in the exhibition. Uh, because the motif of the exhibition, I told you, there is the form, there is the dynamic, there is the aesthetic, and now there is the motif. A motif is like, or how can I say, a freeze, a motif, a freeze, is in this exhibition, is the protest, the furor, anti furor use protest. This is the motif of the exhibition, of the exhibition Das Auge. The motif, it's a decorative thing. It's like, you know, like in a bath, 
and a public bath is what runs around all. You know, this is the motif of the exhibition. It's this protests against for, for use. Uh, there are other aesthetics I'm interested, like the big heart, of course, the, the flag, the banner, the red banner, the, the heart, the red heart, and this picture, especially, I love it, for the sculpture, who somebody did here in front. Uh, somebody put a kind of pyramid, and I did it in the exhibition Das Auge, because this, I think, is a contemporary sculpture. A pyramid with uh, tissue, with fabric, and with small uh, animals, and then with paint over. So I like this. I think this is really strong and clear, and I'm interested in this aesthetic. And I want to work with this kind of aesthetic. As you see, in this exhibition, I, I built myself my, as a homage or also a recuperation <coughs> of what is my own, this kind of uh, sculpture. This is, to me, a, a, a sculpture today, you know. This is my contribution to sculpture today. Um, there is, in my exhibition, text, and I would like uh, to speak a little bit what is, the, what is the mission of this text. The text, as you can see on the wall or on the panels, people are, are, are um, having, uh, it are cut out. They are cut out of magazines, of um, news magazines. They have nothing to do with the motif of the exhibition. They are cut out uh, because I cut it away, the informational part, but they are not invention of me. They are from the world, or we can say from the dictatorship of information. I cut them out. I cut out what make uh, a kind of a relation to a to a person, to a region, or to a date. So they are just like a skeleton, a skeleton. And of course, why? Because when there is a truth, the truth, where, which I am interested in, as such, there is, and we are living in it, the world of information, of opinion, of comment, and this had absolutely not to do with the truth, of course. So I wanted, in my collage, in this space, I wanted to point this out. So just any, uh, 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 how I get these informations, or how I get these headlines, just cut out of, of, uh, of magazines. And then I spray it, I paint it, or I photocopy it and use it as, as a blind text, as a text uh, to, uh, to signify there is somebody who wants to tell something. But there is also another text in my exhibition, Das Auge. It's, I call it an integrated text. It's the text of my friend, French friend, Manuel Joseph. It's called Flat red flag. It's not the first time I'm working with Manuel Joseph. Uh, I asked him to conceive a text uh, as an author, as a poet. And um, he did this text, flat red flag. And in this text it's not a question about the I, about uh, the, my exhibition, about my work, but it's like a piece of art itself. What I'm interested in is that, uh, uh, not in collaboration, but I'm interested in working what I call or we call responsibility non partage, non-shared non responsibility. What means this? It means that Manuel, after 
accepting my invitation is completely free to write what he wants. And the only thing here was I wanted that it is uh, written in or printed in red. And so it will be integrated as a, as a part of the exhibition. But here, of course, I wanted, you know, what I want is with this not give myself a comment or an explication or another point of view of the exhibition, but going behind my visual work and offering to the people who can take them away because it's to take away for free uh, extension. Again, like I, like I told you in the beginning, uh, the, the red is the dynamic who never ends. To propose, I wanted to propose another, another dynamic to continue. So what I imagine is that somebody takes this text, even perhaps thinking this is the explication about the work, and go home, goes home, and perhaps some, at some point he reads the text. And then it, the exhibition, my work, has a prolongation. And I'm interested in to work in what we call unshared responsibility, because I'm not telling Manuel Joseph uh, what he has to do, and he is not asking me uh, how I present then in my work his work. So what is nice, but not nice because I think it's function or it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, 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 it's something uh, people really get, but it's just um, uh, nice that perhaps mechanically people take it, you know, away because something is for free, so they take it away. I like this because it's never lost. It's always a chance to get something and perhaps at a moment, a quiet moment, to, to, to be involved when you, when you want. So this is why I'm very happy that we could also here to reprint the text um, uh, of Manuel Joseph. So one of the questions also of Gregory was of course about the Canadian flag and the red flag. So uh, this is, of course, uh, something I really want to try to respond to you. You know, from the beginning, when I decided that the eye sees, sees everything red and connected them, of course, uh, it was obvious to me also to use uh, the flags of the nation, of, of, of all nations which are red, or which are red is a, a very dominant color, like Japan, ex only red, Switzerland, only Austria, Canada, Tunisia, etc. Only red, Grönland, etc. But then Morocco, which is dominant red, or here Great Britain, which has a big part on an important part of red or other, other countries like Aruba, Pacific Island, which has small red in their flag. So I did connect them all together, not because this is a new uh, universal, uh, you know, or another organization, but just because they have red in the flag. And I think uh, perhaps it means something that so many countries uh, has read in the flag. Perhaps it's, uh, uh, it's perhaps, I don't know, that's why I say perhaps, it's, uh, uh, it has to do with that I could imagine that uh, countries or states uh, are built in violence. And, uh, 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 based on, on, on blood. It could be that this is the reason. So that is not very important. The important is that I really put together each flag which is red and also this one, they are not red, I worked with. And here 
Uh, this is the Canadian issue I was asked by her. You know, I'm not coming from Switzerland to Canada to do to tell you something about seeds, because we in Switzerland we don't have seeds. But I'm not here as as the as this person. But I'm here as the person who has also red in the color, in the flag, you know? So that's why uh, why Canada? And I show you this because I thought this is again quite a creative act, very simple, perhaps to be, but I, you don't anymore would like to see it, I don't know. But I like, I like this silliness, this simplicity, this ridiculity also. And um, uh, I like that there is a very small intervention and I made as well these kind of interventions because I put after all flags in the exhibition, you can see, and I just uh, took away uh, with a white color here each, everything which is not red. Because in every case, the, the eye cannot see it. So it can only see the red. So this gives like new 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 puzzle of I don't know abstract abstraction or nations so this is how I did work out from an existing flag uh, extension and this is to me this is also a part of the exhibition this is the in a way the visual proof that's not about Canada, not about Austria, not about Switzerland. It's just about the color, you know, who comes out of the flag. This is Vietnam, and again in Vietnam, the flag of Vietnam, beautiful. This is again, Vietnam has no seals. But it's not about Vietnam, it's about the red flag, who goes, who comes, uh, the red comes out of the flag. So that's why uh, this is in a way, that's why I wanted to show it to you is the proof that it's not about uh, the Canadian flag. So now, more practically, how to do this work in the space? Because we must know this. That's why I sh can show you the pictures. Because this work was shown before, for two years ago, or three, two and a half years ago, in the Secession in Vienna. So my problem was how, this, how to show again this complex work, and in in another situation, in another in another space, in another in another city, in another another country. This is the so how I try to proceed. This is the the first drawing I made for this. You know, and when I do a drawing very quickly, the drawings like this, I don't like to go to the details. Uh, but uh, what I like is to decide me for the elements. You know, the hemisphere, the eye, the chairs, etc., etc. I like to, I like to decide me for the elements, and this helps me after. This is my guideline because after, in the space, which is different, I have to put everything in the space because they are the elements I, w I had. I had to take the decision for, and I want to be truthful to it. This is the space of secession, a beautiful space white cube space, uh, 600 meters square, quite, quite big. This is what's the space, and particular with a beautiful um, uh, daylight. White, typical white cube space. This space was, is more than 100 years, said Cecil. This is an artist drawing space, beautiful. And on the space, that's just I told you, because I like it so much, it's written, Der Zeit ihre Kunst, what means e to each time it's art. It's written since more than 100 years, to each time it's art, and then Der Kunst ihre Freiheit, to the art it's freedom. And when you go in, inside, you know, in this kind of art deco temple, it's like a cathedral as an artist, and you see this written on, it makes you it makes you confident, and and 
it's, it's nice. So, okay, um, what I did in, in the situation, of course, I did the big stage, as I told you, for the motif for these protesters, the four protesters, this was the, in the exhibition, this was uh, how I make a drawing to put the, the space. And of course, here in, in Canada, it is, it is different. Why I show this is actually because when Gregor invited me to do this exhibition, I was, we were outside, this is not an actual photo, I think. Uh, we were outside, he, and when, when we were outside, he told me about the exhibition project. And I saw the Canadian, the Canadian flag somewhere, you know, there is a Canadian flag. And I thought, I have to present, I have to propose him this, because you know, it's, it's about this, about this red flag, because I, you know, I worked, worked it. And so this was uh, which came in my spirit. And then after it, it, it came really now uh, uh, physics. But the space is very different. First, it's much smaller. It's 400 meters square. And also, it's not a white cube. It's a black box. <laughs> so, or it was a black box, I mean. So this was the problem. But because, that's why I show you the drawing, because, so, because I was decided to put it in, you know, because I was so happy to do it. So I, I had, to, I had to, to figure out how to do. So for example, the big stage is a little bit smaller and, uh, and, uh, and it will be much more tougher and tighter. And, and I'm very happy to present to uh, we made a mezzanine. Since a long time, since a long time, I wanted to do a mezzanine. <laughs> this is the first time I did it. First time I did a mezzanine. Again, I like, I like this kind of practical, a little bit stupid idea to make the place bigger, yes? And to make a mezzanine, you know? It, you have a beautiful space and then you do a mezzanine. So the first time, I, and I'm very happy that thanks to Paul Singron and his team here, they could do a fantastic mezzanine. So, you know, a mezzanine, what I like is also, a mezzanine is in a way not really necessary. It's, a, it's not really necessary, but okay, uh, you, you will save space, or you will find new space, create new space, so you make it. But there is something I really like in a mezzanine. It gives some joy, joy. Because when you go up to the mezzanine, you have another point of view. It's not to have a point of view, the mezzanine is not there for to have an another point of view, but it's there to have a bigger space. So this is uh, the mezzanine they built, and with this mezzanine, I could put now everything into the space. So uh, uh, back to uh, the slaughter and the question about the motif, in a way, of this exhibition. So there, when I start to document me, I saw a lot of very graphic pictures, but graphic meaning, I know, I think in English graphic means something different than I think. Graphic, I mean, just very sign, signal, very clear, you know, for example, uh, red on white. So uh, I saw these this signs and um, this was something I was really interested in and I thought this is the point I have to work with and because the eye, the eye, can, can see this. And this is uh, why I, in this um, exhibition there is a, a, a nice field and uh, uh, on the ice field uh, you will find uh, writings of again this kind of cutouts. But you know, my exhibition, as I told you, uh, is not about the slaughter of innocent seeds. And also not about killing whales, innocent whales. It's not about uh, the, the innocent torero, tor toros, uh, the innocent bulls they're killed, or, or it's not about the innocent uh, dogs or cats who uh, are eaten. 
But this is the motif of the exhibition. But what I'm interested in, of course, with these graphic pictures is, and that's why the eye, the form of the eye helps me, is to make a link between all these innocent animals killed to the killing of non-innocent human beings. This is my problem. This is the problem. The non-innocent humans and not the innocent seeds. So this is why the eye helps me to go very deeply to this, to touch this hard core. You know, that I, my problem is the killing of non-innocent people, not of innocent seeds. You know, and that's why I needed the eye to make this clear. And when there are very tough pictures, hardcore pictures, of course, they are there because they must make the link between uh, everything who is connected and the eyes see. And of course, they must point out there is nobody who is innocent. There is nobody who, who de deserves less or more to survive or to be not killed. And that's also why I show this picture. Never I exclude me from this question because my, me, myself, I'm not innocent. So the question is, and this is why the I is behind this uh, question of culprit or question of uh, revenge or, or question of anger. The question is about the condition of the human, the non-innocent of the human, and what we do to protect these non-innocent humans. That is the, the hidden goal uh, of this exhibition, uh, Das Auge. And of course, when I show uh, in this exhibition some pictures uh, which, which are very difficult to look at, it's also because they have something to do. And I took this citation as a counterexample, and uh, that's why uh, I use these kind of pictures uh, with abundance also in the exhibition, Das Auge. Thank you. Um, hi, thank you. Very interesting talk. Are there n no non-innocent human beings at all? Yes, it's certainly not up to me <laughs> to judge this. <laughs> but I know that I, I can only speak from myself. I'm not innocent. You know, there was this in, there was this Mumbai attentat three years ago or so, Mumbai killing uh, in India, and I mentioned I wrote down what the only terrorist which was uh, catched, which was not which was not killed, he was catched and he he had a, a trial and then. Uh, he was, I, I think now he's condemned to death, and he told, I don't, he told to the trial, I don't think I'm innocent. And I wrote it down, because I think, you know, abroad what he did, this is really an universal sentence. I don't think I'm innocent. So I wrote it for me, and this, uh, this accompanies me. Hi, I, I've only ever lived in a red room once and it was for two months and it was a really intense experience or just a time of my life. Um, but then afterwards somebody told me that 
being around red all the time will really bring out intense feelings and a lot of passion and and it kind of it just makes it, it heightened and I'm just curious about the time that you've spent focusing on everything that's red and how that's changed how you have uh, approached your life oh it didn't change my life because uh, no I mean to me the experience is to do the work, you know, not the red. As I told you, the red is, the red is only the dynamic, and um, uh, I used, I used this joyful and playful, and uh, you know, with a lot of. Uh, it was just, uh, it's just the dynamic. It's not. I'm not into the experience. It's a. Uh, that's why the eye, the, the eye is to me interest, important. You know, the eye, one eye inside. This is the important to me. This was, this is the experience. And when you ask me about the one experience, can I? It's not an anecdote. I would like two days ago somebody asked me why, why, what was the starting point? And it's not about the red. The starting point was not red. You know, 20 years ago, a revolution in Romania. Timisoara, Timisoara, second city in, uh, in Romania. Uh, there was the revolution. I looked TV, fascinated and happy that uh, the dictator fall and everything. And uh, one or two days before uh, Christmas, he said, God, it's not important, but uh, we saw pictures about dead people, naked dead people, um, on a lying on a street. And um, the comment was, the information was that these people were killed by Ceausescu, by Securitate, um, uh, and um, these people um, uh, were, uh, of course, innocents. But I looked, what was strange, and this is why it's about my work, DI, what was strange? I remarked something strange. I mean, remarked that all of these dead people, they had here um, cut, cut, they were cut, and they had a cicatrice, a scarf here, all of this. I, I saw it, but the comment, I thought it's strange, but the comment was they are killed by Ceausescu uh, in, in, this, uh, in this revolutionary, you know, this revolution uprising. And, uh, I, did, I couldn't do something with this, with my eye who looked, who saw this. You know, I saw it and I couldn't deal with him. I said, this is strange. And then, of course, after the revolution, where everybody was happy and me also, that it goes to, to, the, to the good end, we learned that these people were killed a long time before and they were just carried dead by the revolutionaries in order, of course, for the television to show how, how, how bad is the regime, which is, of course, uh, true. But, you know, this was the point. This was my experience, you know, this one, that my eye saw this. I saw it, but I couldn't have the information because the information told me something completely different, you know. So this was a point I, I never forget, you know, that... And that's why, to me, it was about truth as such. Because this case is very interesting. Because, of course, Sao Ceausescu did kill thousands of people, of course. And there are only these 20 people. There were only 19 or 20 people there. But, okay, they are representing. But they are not really the people So who were killed. So I, I thought this was the problematic. And I am interested in this, you know, as, as artists and as me. I'm interested in And this was my big experience. And that's why I believe a picture don't lie. Don't lie. The picture, when you cannot lie. Well, I have a question. Um, I think you just answered it. But So basically you're saying that your work's not about the moral problem that you just posed there about nobody being innocent, but about how we relate to these uh, representations of different types of slaughter, whether it be human beings or seals? Yeah, I wasn't cl not clear. 
Uh, my question wasn't clear? No, me, I was not clear in my explication. <laughs> I realize. So can you uh, elaborate? But what, what do I have to el elaborate? That was my question. <laughs> yeah, can, I, I didn't understand it. The question, can you reformulate it, please? Uh, because you posed this question about whether we're innocent or not innocent. But that, I was saying, but the work's not really about that, is it? It's about how we actually relate to these photographs. Yeah, of course. I mean, I wanted to do a complex work which gives not only one uh, uh, question, but more questions. Uh, of course, the question of the innocent, the non-innocent, the question of the, the killing, for example, we can say also uh, killing people, killing animals, you know, is this the start? Is this the start point? Kill, kill animals, then kill people, etc. There are a lot of, I'm interested in a lot of a, a, a wide branch of, uh, of questions who arise. But in order to do it, that they, they arrived, their questions can exist, I must use something very simply, very decorative. That's why the motif, the slaughter of the, of the, um, of the seals. But then, of course, the, I hope, and there are the question to myself, the questions arise because I worked it out. I tried to give a form to this. And uh, the, the innocence or non-innocence is only one issue. The other issue could be, of course, could be the, uh, an economical issue, or could be an issue of tradition, or could be an issue of, of, hum uh, of, of natural resources, etc., etc. Yeah, because you could have shown a lot of different images, but yeah, you focus on a particular type of image. That, so this question about the truth of the image, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I made this choice to use this, this for, this for protest, anti for protest. Hi, I just had a question about um, the art goer. When they enter the space, do what is the experience? Um, do people tend to sit in the seats, or how long, on average, do they stay in the space? Are conversations sparked, or does it vary from day to day? When the exhibition was originally on a couple years ago. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how how they do, how they will react, what they think. But you know, what I want is to do something dense, something charged, something where there is a frontality. There is frontality. One thing also, there is no overlooking. Want I want to work that there is the peop, that the spectator or the visitor is completely inside. Of course, I want that's what I want. Why I want it? Of course, because uh, we are in the world surrounded by complex, chaotic uh, problems who arise. So I want to recreate this in my work. So uh, I want not that there is the possibility to step back. You know, I want there is uh, a completely implication possible or a rejection also, why not? But I mean, I'm interested in create the condition that there is from the artwork, from all this stuff to the spectator, a dialogue possible or a confrontation. That's my, that's what I have to do. I have to work out this platform. I have to give all this stuff that the people can feel implicated. Perhaps it doesn't work. I don't know, but I cannot ask myself how it works. I can just tell you what I want. I want 
completely what I wish is implication of somebody. And it's not that he has to sit down or not. Implica what is the beauty of implication is, I think, thinking that you start to think about. So you cannot see it. Is somebody implicated, for example? That's why I like the word implication. Um, any other questions? Um, given that the work was uh, first presented at the Vienna Secession, does this aesthetic of uh, blood and slaughter have anything, any relation at all to um, uh, Vienna actionism? No, 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 actually, no. No, really not. No. <laughs> <laughs> But of course, you're right, um, people in Vienna did, did make this link, which I think is nice, it's fine. But it's not, it's not absolutely not about, really not. I mean, you know, uh, what is nice in art, I really believe, I think it's really nice that they are always openings, they are holes, they are windows to, uh, to to the hardcore of reality. And, but it's not about, you know, we cut, for example, here in power plant, we cut a window because I wanted more light. So we cut the window and was, what can you see through the window? The, 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 the sea, uh, not the sea, the lake, <laughs> okay? And on the lake, what is on the lake? Ice. And what is inside? Just there where is the lake is the ice field, my ice field, you know? So it's, I like it, but it was not thought about. You have to be touched by grace as artist, you know? And that's fine. And sometimes there are misunderstandings, and I'm okay, I'm okay and a lot of misunderstandings, and I'm a lot of, and a lot of uh, misinterpretation, and I'm okay with this. It's, it's, but I'm, I'm, I must know why I do the work, you know? That's why I show you the pictures, for example, of this drawing of the ice field with the blood of the, you know, with the real blood, this graphic picture of the, with the blood, you know. This was the starting, start, starting point. And you know, also, when you are an artist and you're starting a project, there are things are coming to you when you're working as, for example, as my, my limited, but uh, already a little bit confrontation with the color rot, red, so it comes with, so you didn't thought about it in the beginning. So uh, my question, and perhaps it's just a clarification, is it seems that the, much of the violence uh, within the installation is comic and kind of Disney. Um, certainly many of us giggled at the um, images of the piles and the relentless piles of seals and the dripping blood, but it seems the or perhaps you could clarify what you see as the image, because you said you believed the image, but it seemed the hard, hard sort of gasp image that I experienced was the photographic image of the uh, decapitated person. So it's, so are you, is that a part of how you're playing off the implication, is, is bringing in this kind of comic and humor played off with, brutal documentary photographic images? And which do you see as the image? Because I wasn't sure whether you see the whole thing as the image or the photographs are the image that you believe are true. I mean, this is, this is a, a presentation of the work exhibited. Yes. And I'm sorry that there, I, I sometimes, I mean, there is, I choose some drawings, some mm -hmm. uh, pictures, uh, they, 
you also don't see in the exhibition, of no. course. So that's, um, first of all, just to say, I, I, I show these pictures in order to, be, to try, try to be clear. But you're right. I'm interested in, in and that's why I, I, again, I must insist with the forum DI, who makes no distinction between Disney, the red of a Disney figure, and, and uh, the killed people who, who lost his blood, you know? I, this is what I do. This is what I, I try to do in this work, in this specific work, absolutely. So this, and that's why I need the eye who connects only the red color together. Okay. So this is uh, perhaps a little bit more difficult to see in two mm -hmm. or three pictures coming out of the context, but the pictures in this exhibition are never, they are, of course, related together. And uh, they, are, they are shocking to them mm. together. And uh, they are, what I wanted, they are facets, shown in facets, you know, and they are shown as uh, fragments. So this is, because uh, before somebody asked, me how you want that people react. I want that people feel like, you know, uh, in, a, in, a, in a kaleidoscope, you know, with a, a lot of uh, fragments coming to you and coming into you. And you, you cannot make the distinction, you cannot judge it, you know, in good or bad or interesting or not interesting. So this is how, how I, uh, I try to to act with this work. Mm -hmm. Hello, uh, th thanks. Uh, thank you for the quote uh, uh, when you said, to each kind it's art, and which implies a kind of taxonomy of maybe different arts. Uh, so, so when you talked about the red linking everything, linking, linking all the fragments, can you maybe talk about the elements in place or how you see them in your work as being of a different order? You know, you said like the mezzanine is very special, the window, the mannequins, the stage, the text. In your mind, is there quite a different uh, order or different kind of interventions that are subsequently linked by the red? No, no, <laughs> again, it's not about the red. It's just, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, I mean, it's just, I had to do my work and I need to find what we can call solution, you know, solutions. So, but actually I'm very interested in this question that, uh, 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 that's why I showed this picture. When I come with my elements and the, the space is too small, but I had to, I decided to put them all in. I have to find solutions, how to put them in. And I'm interested that they are, they are often not ideal solution, not non-ideal solution, you know. Uh, they are not nicey because there's a lack of space. You have to put them somewhere. You even cannot really turn around, you know. I'm interested in this, but I'm interested in this not only in this work Das Auge, but I'm interested as an artist today working in the space. So that's why I, I, I always start with this idea of the elements they need it to be connected, but then how to lay them out is made in a, in a situation of urgency and emergency and in, in a kind of panic also, because it's the panic who makes, makes, because when I normally thought about, I would say perhaps it's better to not put this in because it's too much, because then you cannot you know, turn around, etc. But then I decide I had to follow my decision to put everything inside. So that's how, how I work. It's a technique of work that I developed. It's a technique of work. And it's of course also, when you permit me to say this, it's a political decision, you know, not to let uh, the space to to have the overlook, and, you know, but to really fill it. Is there any last question? <laughs> uh, 
talking about space, I was wondering about the difference between when you use an exhibition space, uh, such as the power plant or secession steel, uh, secession, or the, um, when you do it outside, such as the Bailmere project or the uh, Glasgow project, where, where pieces were vandalized and I understand you have a certain control when you're in a gallery and I wonder if when you're if there's a different sort of planning process when you put something outside or when it's in a gallery. Yeah, there first of all working in a gallery as how the power plant is easy because the people are there they're helping they're, everything is there it's hot it's no raining no really it's easy and each project in public space is really, I must say, 10 times more difficult, 20 times, 100 times, each project. It's nothing, I mean nothing not, but it's not a big deal to work with a professional exhibi exhibition space. That's really true, first of all. Then, but of course, there is something different. That's the public space. It's uh, uh, different because the people who are, who are there, who are surrounding or who pa are the passerby who I choose to, to do the work. It's different also because it's the weather. It's different because it's all, it's 24 hours, you know. It's, uh, uh, the difference is also the, the question of the, of the, the security or the, the safety of the, th of the, mat of the, of the thing, etc. So it, it, it's a lot of, a lot of other questions arise that you have not to care about in a, in a gallery, in a museum, or also in an alternative uh, art space. This is what is the beauty in working in public space, but this is also why it is so demanding. When you do, like me, or you try to do, like me, a work in public space who, who is based on, on precarity, as well, I mean, who is not a, a, a laser sculpture or something who, I mean, something who is uh, perhaps uh, more resistant uh, in, in the, or more, more adaptable in the nature. So when you do it with, with the people, with uh, involving of a neighborhood, for example, then it means it's a long preparation, it needs a long preparation, it needs, uh, yeah, it needs much more engagement, it needs more money, it needs more time, it needs more, uh, more energy. And uh, this is, yeah, it's uh, something different. But not my goals are different. My goals as an artist to touch the non-exclusive public my goal to create what I did here, or try to do, a critical corpus, you know? That's what I do, a critical corpus I try to do. Oh, and also not, of course, to invent a new form of art that I try. I mean, sorry, it's perhaps pretentious, but I think as artists, <laughs> as artists you want to need to do this, a new, a new term of art. So this is the same, I do it here, added public space. Do you have a preference between either public or uh, gallery space? Sorry, I didn't Do understand. you have a preference? No, I have no preference. My preference is when you want to do both. Yes, and since the beginning, I was, I, I thought I will be, because my big, the, uh, one of the biggers I, I really admire is Joseph Boyce. What I, for example, admire in him is that he always made also work in public space. And I thought this is great. I just, I don't want to be only an artist in gallery, in museums, in private galleries, commercial, also in public space. And I made it since my beginning. And, uh, and I want, to, I will continue. But now my work in public space gets very complex, so I cannot do every year. I work. I mean, I need time, a lot of time, to 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 do it. But I continue. Thank you. Um, well, thank you, Thomas, very much, and thank you, everyone, for coming out. Tonight. Thank you.